So you've got a gaming channel, but you can't seem to figure out how to get views or subscribers. It's frustrating, it's embarrassing. You spend all that time editing your videos and gaming and scripting, but when you upload them to YouTube, they get a grand total of four views, three of which came from you refreshing the screen to see how many views you'd gotten. And let's just say this scenario has repeated itself more times than you'd care to admit. So what you need is a simple step-by-step -step action plan that you can follow that will guarantee you views and subscribers. And in this video, I'm gonna do my best to give you just that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you my exact 11-step method that I personally use to grow a gaming channel from zero to close to 20 million views. So let's get stuck into it. G'day, my name's Marcus. I've worked on multiple successful channels, but I understand that getting views and subscribers is bloody goddamn hard. I know that because when I first started on YouTube, I sucked. But nowadays, I suck a little bit less, so I started GYGC to share some of my YouTube experiences, tactics, and strategies with people like you. In this video, I'm gonna do my best to teach you what I call the Grow Your Gaming Channel Method, or GYGC Method for short. It's an 11-step process that will teach you the exact strategies, tips, and tricks that actually matter to gaming YouTubers, and I'm gonna rank them so that if you have limited time, you can look at the rankings and you can focus on the things that will actually get you the most results in the shortest period of time. So there's a list on screen, and as you can see, we're gonna start from our 11th most important tactic and work our way all the way through to our number one tactic. But first, let me quickly tell you a little bit about my journey because I know sometimes it's easy to put people up on a pedestal because you don't see their failures. When I first started, it took me a year to get 70 subscribers, and that wasn't because I wasn't taking action. I was posting one to two videos every week. I had thousands of dollars worth of equipment and software, but nothing. It just felt like I was walking down this long, dark tunnel. I knew there was a light somewhere at the end, but I was just blundering around and falling over rocks and I wasn't going anywhere. I was watching all these so-called gurus and I was writing down their tips and then I'd move on to the next video and I don't know, nothing helped. And as I mentioned previously, this went on for a year. So I created this video with my past self in mind. This is the video that would have guided me through that tunnel and into the light. Now, I don't mean to be an arrogant, egotistical, braggadocious, haughty, conceited, overbearing, pompous, boastful, high and mighty, self-important narcissist. But after watching almost every guru on YouTube, I really do think this is the best video on the internet for YouTube is wanting to grow their gaming channel. So please don't be like me when I first started. Don't just write down these tips and move on to the next video. Watch this video two, three, four, ten times if you need. However many times you need to fully internalize and understand all of the tactics. Over the years, I've been fortunate enough to help thousands of people grow their gaming channels and I've never ever come across a channel that is implementing the GYGC method but isn't succeeding. So I'm of the belief that if you properly implement this method, your success as a gaming YouTuber is almost guaranteed. So we're going to start from the least important tactic and work our way all the way up to the most important tactic. So I highly recommend you watch this video all the way to the end. And when you implement the tactics on your channel, implement them in numerical order. Let's get started. Have a strong CTA, aka call to action. What is a call to action? A CTA is generally the part of your video where you request your audience do something. Please subscribe to my channel, please leave a like, please leave a comment, etc, etc. If you want subscribers, in your videos make sure you ask people to subscribe. But don't just ask them to subscribe, make sure you tell them why they should subscribe as well. For example, if I was to ask you to subscribe to this channel, I wouldn't simply say, please subscribe to the GYGC channel. I would say something more along the lines of, on this channel, we post tips and tricks that help gamers grow their channels, so I'd highly recommend you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. You see the difference there? That was something I just came up with right then and there, so it wasn't extremely well thought out. But you get the idea. I'm telling people not just what I want them to do, but why I would recommend they take that action. And you should do the same thing on your channel. Try and ask people to subscribe a couple of times during your video in different points, maybe even in different forms, to help keep the action that you want them to take top of mind and ultimately maximize the amount of subscribers you get from your videos. Next tip, become a part of the community. Interact with your community and connect with them in the places they tend to hang out. Maybe it's a physical meetup, maybe it's on social media, maybe it's on a forum, maybe it's in a comment section. Wherever it is, try to hang out with the people you're creating videos for. Now, there are a couple of reasons why this is a great tactic for helping you grow your gaming channel. Firstly, it helps you get a feel for what problems and issues your audience have and meeting them where they're at is gonna help you get a vibe for what kind of content they want to see. Secondly, hanging out with your ideal audience helps you stay up to date on the latest developments, news, and trends. With the internet nowadays, there's so much information and sometimes it can actually be easy to miss an important announcement, a trend, or a news update. And on YouTube, getting on top of something like that early and creating a video about it before anyone else can really give you a big advantage and we're going to talk about that later in the video. Also, if you're interacting with the community, generally building relationships, helping people out, people are most likely going to become interested in who you are and what it is 
that you're doing. Therefore, they might click on your username and when they find the link to your YouTube channel, they might visit your channel and subscribe. Next, promote your videos. Now you may have tried to promote your videos but with little success and that's probably because you're doing it wrong. Promoting your videos is a complete waste of time if you don't have the last few tips in this video. So make sure you stick around to the end otherwise promoting your videos will be a big waste of time. However, firstly, what is the definition of promotion? For me, the definition of promotion is actively doing something that is generating traffic and bringing people to your content. Now when you're promoting, obviously don't spam. Promoting does not mean copying and pasting links to your YouTube videos all over the internet internet accompanied by the phrase, please subscribe to me like a brain dead robot. Remember that the people you're promoting to are people. Put yourself in their shoes. Would you take action? Would you click that link and go and watch your video? Now you might be wondering what are some ways that you can promote your video? Now I'm going to cover this quickly because we've got a lot to cover in this video, but you can promote on social media. You can promote in groups and forums. You can promote in Q and A sites. You can promote your videos in your own videos. So using cards and end screens, you can collaborate with other creators. Again, regardless, of which avenue you choose to pursue though, don't spam. Remember that the people you're promoting to are people. Next, create searchable content. And there are two levels to this. The first is optimizing the metadata within each of your videos. And the second level is specifically creating videos that are searchable, but don't have a lot of competition. And then those videos will bring traffic to your channel. And then hopefully said traffic will watch some of your other videos. First, let's talk about the first stage, optimizing metadata. But what is metadata? Think about it this way. Metadata is the stuff in your video that tells the YouTube algorithm what your video is about. In short, the YouTube algorithm's job is to send videos to people who want to watch those videos. However, the YouTube algorithm isn't a person. It can't tell what your video is actually about. What it does is it analyzes the metadata and analyzes certain data points and settings to figure out what exactly the video is about so it can promote that video to the right people. Now, as you're probably becoming aware, metadata encompasses a whole range of things. However, the things that we're going to be talking about today are titles, descriptions, tags and settings. Now we're going to be talking about titles later because they're really important, but let's focus on descriptions, tags and settings. You want to make sure you optimize your descriptions, not just to be readable, but also to include keywords and keyword phrases that will tell the algorithm what your video is about. Now this doesn't mean you can include a random list of keywords and keyword phrases in your video description. However, it does mean as you're writing your descriptions, try to include words and phrases that are relating to the topic of the video. So the YouTube algorithm, will get a clearer idea of what your video is about and it might be more inclined to promote your video to people who might be interested in watching it. Secondly, tags. Now you may already know this, but you can add tags to your YouTube videos. Tags are literally just metadata. The YouTube algorithm analyzes them and if you contain tags that are relevant to your video, the YouTube algorithm will match those things up, add everything together and hopefully come to the conclusion, this video is about X topic, I should send it and promote it to people who are interested in X topic. Finally, there's the settings of your video. So as you're going through and posting your video, you'll have access to certain settings. Now, I'm not going to have time to get into all of the event settings, but some things you might want to pay attention to are setting the correct category for your video. So as a gamer, you can actually select the category as gaming and mark your video as a gaming video. And then under that, a little text box will appear and you can actually select the game that is featured in the video you're posting. Again, these are just more things that the algorithm will analyze because remember the algorithm can't actually tell what it is that our video is about. So we're just telling the algorithm what our video is about so it knows exactly the type of person it needs to promote your video to. The second level of creating searchable content is specifically going out there and looking for niche topics that people will be searching for but there's very little to no competition for. Now when you create videos specifically for these search terms, you create searchable videos, you have a better chance of ranking and showing up for those topics than you may with your standard videos and so therefore it's a good way to generate some traction when you're getting started. Now these searchable videos videos, you want to keep them related to your YouTube channel, obviously, because when people are watching, the ultimate goal is then for them to check out some of your other content. However, your searchable content can be a little bit less restrictive than, say, your standard content. On my Silky channel, we normally post humorous, funny moments videos, montages, compilations, stuff like that. However, way back when I was starting out, I encountered an issue when I was installing a DLC pack. Now, when I was searching around for a solution to this issue, I couldn't really find much. And so when I found the solution to this problem and I put two and two together and realized, hey, I had this problem. I'm sure there are other people who have this problem, but there isn't really any education 
educational content out there, I decided to create a random YouTube video helping people to solve that problem. Now, as you can see on screen, that video performed quite well. Now, obviously not all those people visited my other content and slash or subscribed. However, during that video, I did promote some of my regular content and I'm sure that a percentage of the people who watched my DLC waiting to install glitch tutorial will have at the very least watched one of my other videos. Now, this was an extreme example because I wanted to illustrate a point, but this is the kind of thing you want to think about. When you're searching for topics that may eventuate into great searchable videos, make sure you think about the type of person who's going to be attracted to watch that searchable video and then make sure to promote your existing content and your regular content within that searchable video to make the most of any attention it may generate. So in summary, you should make sure all of your metadata is as optimized as it can be so the algorithm knows what your video is about. And secondly, you can create specific searchable videos about certain topics that may have very little supply or competition, but could be likely to attract people who may be interested in your channel and your content. Next, hijack trends. Create content around trending topics or new content because the fact that that content or topic is trending means that a lot of people are interested in it. And not only does that mean that people will be more likely to watch your video if it's about said trend or incorporate said trend, but the algorithm also analyzes trends. And if it recognizes that your video incorporates or is about a certain trend, it could be more likely to promote that video. For example, let's say you created a Fortnite gameplay video. Chances are that video doesn't perform very well because a Fortnite gameplay video isn't really fresh. It's not new, it's not exciting, it's not a trending topic. There have been thousands of them made, possibly even hundreds of thousands, and a Fortnite gameplay video is about as far from trending as you can get right now. However, let's say somehow we got exclusive access to Fortnite 2, the sequel to Fortnite. This doesn't actually exist, I'm just making this up right now. But imagine we did, I can almost guarantee that that Fortnite 2 gameplay video is going to perform way better than the previous video we mentioned. Because Fortnite 2 is going to be new, it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be a trending topic. Topic. So there are two different ways to incorporate trends within your channel and your videos. So the first is actually incorporating trending elements within your videos. And I know this can be a little bit confusing, so I'm going to give you a concrete example. When I was first starting out on the Silky channel, which is where I've done a lot of my experimentation with this kind of thing, I created gaming funny moment videos. Now at the time, I believe the presidential elections were going on and Donald Trump was a big trending topic. There were a lot of mixed emotions and a lot of trending publications all about Donald Trump and people were lapping it up. Now I was a gaming funny moments channel. I didn't have anything to do with politics and if I was to create a political video, even if it did well, it wouldn't really benefit my channel because my channel was about gaming. However, I could see that this was a massive trending topic and it was too good of an opportunity to miss. So what I did was I created a Star Wars Battlefront 2 funny moments video and incorporated Donald Trump. So it was a Donald Trump themed Star Wars Battlefront funny moments video. Now compared to my other funny moments videos, the only difference was that I added a few memes and jokes and, and references to like the presidential elections and Donald Trump. Trump. But because Donald Trump was such a big trending topic at the time, people lapped up that video. It got way more attention than my standard videos. And the algorithm also noticed this and promoted my video more. Now, I'm not quite sure where that video stands right now, but I'll leave a screenshot up on screen so you can see for yourself. Now, the second way to take advantage of trends is to create an entire video around that topic. I'm going to give you another example from the Silky channel because I want to make this as simple as possible. I'm sure you've heard of the Battlefield franchise, one of the most popular gaming franchises ever. However, Battlefield 5 was very controversial because of some certain decisions the creators of the game had made. And this controversy had kind of spiraled, a lot of people were upset, and it had become a trending topic. Again, Silky was a comedy channel, so I didn't feel like I had the right to create a video talking about the controversy. It wouldn't really fit with my style or theme. So what I did instead was I took the Battlefield 5 trailer and we made a parody out of it. We made memes and jokes out of the sections that were kind of controversial and made it a bit lighthearted and funny. Again, because it was such a trending topic at the time when people saw a Battlefield 5 parody, they were inclined to watch it. On top of that as well, the algorithm started promoting it. It did quite well and it brought a lot of attention for the channel. So you can test incorporating trends on your channel using both of the styles I've just shown you. If you're a small creator and you're struggling to get some attention, I would really recommend hijacking some trends because they can sometimes give your videos that extra hot sauce, that boost. And if you're lucky, one thing leads to the next and you could end up with a viral or semi-viral video that brings in a lot of attention for your channel. Next, be consistent. Consistency is critical to YouTube. Let's think about this. Ultimately, why do people subscribe to your channel? 
It generally comes down to three things. They like you, they like your content, and they want to see more of you and your content. Now, we'll talk about the two former points later in the video, but right now let's focus on point number three. They subscribe to you because they like you and they wanna see more of you. Basically, they're subscribing because they're assuming you're gonna make content that is similar to the video slash videos that they enjoy. In other words, they're expecting some sort of consistency. So let's think about it logically, a quick thought experiment. Why do you think people subscribe to this channel, the GYGC channel? Well, most likely people subscribe because they're assuming I'm going to be uploading more videos teaching them how to grow their gaming channels. And that assumption would be correct. Now they don't wanna miss those videos, so they subscribe. So at the very least, my videos come up in their sub feed and they can choose whether or not they wanna watch those videos. However, let's say uh, next week I decide to post a Barbie doll unboxing video, which I've been very tempted to post by the way. Would you watch it? Yes. Probably not. You subscribed or maybe you're not subscribed, but let's say you subscribe. You subscribe because you wanna watch videos that teach you how to grow your gaming channel. A Barbie doll unboxing video is not consistent with the reason you subscribed. And the same applies for your channel. When people look at your channel and they see an element of consistency, they might be more likely to subscribe because basic common sense says that you're going to continue being consistent and they might not want to miss any of your future content. Now, there are many facets to consistency as well. It's not just uploading schedule. It can be your video content type. It can be your style or branding. It can be your tone. It can be the game you're playing. For example, if you play Call of Duty and you're usually very positive and upbeat, you might attract Call of Duty players who are interested in watching people who are really positive and upbeat. However, if you then decide to post a Minecraft video and you're really down and depressed and negative, the inconsistency may confuse people, may put them off, and at the very least, it's probably not gonna encourage people to subscribe. Now, this does not mean you should not try new things. I think it's important to innovate and keep things fresh. However, when you're trying something new, try to keep the other elements of said new thing consistent. For example, going back to our happy-go-lucky Call of Duty YouTuber, if you really wanna try out Minecraft and you think Minecraft might be a good avenue for you, you can do that, but try to keep the other elements of that video consistent. So if you're really happy-go-lucky and positive in your Call of Duty videos, maybe you should try and be happy-go-lucky and positive in your Minecraft video as well. Next, develop a memorable personal brand. Earlier we talked about consistency, but what do you need to be consistent about apart from your video posting schedule? Your branding. Now we briefly touched on this, but your branding has to do with the way you position yourself and the way you portray yourself to the world. What makes you special? What makes you you? What makes you different from the rest? You want to create a memorable personal brand because something that is memorable stands out. And with so much competition on YouTube, if you can stand out from your competitors in a good way, that's a good thing. Your brand is your X factor. It's the thing that may not seem to make a big difference in the beginning, but over the long term, it's going to help you scale. Think about your favorite YouTuber. I mean, apart from me, obviously that's a given, but think about your second favorite YouTuber. Now think about what it is that makes them different. Why are they your favorite, I mean, second favorite YouTuber? Now, on surface level, you might think, oh, I just like them. I don't know. I just connect with them or whatever it is. But take a, take a look at it more objectively and try to break down what it is that makes you like them. And you'll find what I call the, the core essence of their brand, their X factors. It's the small things they're doing differently, either subconsciously or consciously, that make them appeal to you and make them your favorite YouTuber. I mean, second favorite YouTuber. So on your channel, don't be a stock standard cookie cutter run of the mill YouTuber. We've got too many of them. Try to develop some type of brand around your channel, something or a bunch of little things that make you different and that will make you stand out from the rest when people watch your videos. Next, create content for a niche. Now, one of the biggest issues we face on YouTube is competition. The problem is there are so many YouTubers posting videos that it can be very difficult for our videos to stand out from the rest. And the way I'd like to think about this phenomenon of competition on YouTube is supply and demand. So supply and demand is a business term and supply is basically the entity is supplying a product or service and the demand is the amount of people wanting to buy that product or service. Now, for example, let's say you're selling Barbie dolls and let's say there are five other businesses also selling Barbie dolls. That's the supply. On the other hand, let's say that there are 1 million customers looking for Barbie dolls. That's the demand. Well, chances are your Barbie doll producing business might do okay because there is a really high demand but supply is quite moderate. However, a problem occurs when there's more supply than there is demand. That's when the that's when supply, that's when the businesses start missing out. And the same is true on YouTube. So what we need to do is we need to find something, a product or offering, aka 
create a video type or video style that has demand, but has very little supply. And in case you haven't gathered this yet, supply is basically the same thing as competition, but supply makes me sound smarter, so I normally go with that. Now, an area or facet on YouTube that has very, very low supply, but has a moderate amount of demand, I call a niche. So as a gaming channel, I guess just getting started, it's important for you to find a niche. Unfortunately, it's going to be very unlikely that you can compete against larger YouTubers who have established followings and have extremely good content because they've been working at it for a long time. If you try to create similar videos to them, it may be very difficult for you to start growing your channel. So what you might want to do is look for a niche, a type of content for a certain video game that has some demand. There are viewers looking to watch that type of content, but there is very little supply. You're not going to be competing with YouTubers who have millions of subscribers. I know sometimes it can be tempting as a smaller creator to want to create lots of different random videos on random topics, and it's okay to experiment with those kind of things as long as you're keeping uh, the elements of that content relatively consistent. However, well, once you find a niche where it seems that there's a decent amount of demand, but there's not too much competition, and you can actually supply content that's going to get seen, you really want to knuckle down on that. Now, I do want to quickly point out there are a few exceptions to this niching down your content rule, and if you're one of those exceptions, you probably know. However, for the vast majority of people, it is really important that you pick a niche and focus on that if you want to grow your gaming channel effectively. Next, maximize your click-through rate. As with all the points we've talked about so far, I really want to explain what exactly this is and why it's important. Because I think that if I take a bit of extra time and teach you the principles behind these things we're talking about, you'll be smart enough to reverse engineer them. So let's think about this logically. Let's step all the way back and let's think about how do we get subscribers? Well, to get subscribers, we first need someone to actually watch and enjoy our content. Now that's all well and good, but the problem is you're not getting any views at the moment, right? And that's probably due to the points we talked about earlier. Maybe the algorithm is not promoting your channel enough because your metadata is not good. Maybe you're not in a niche and there's too much competition for you to get noticed. But there's a step in between those two things because even if your content is great and when people watch it, they subscribe and you're in a niche where your content's actually going to be seen and promoted by the YouTube algorithm and people in the search results, you actually need to entice people to click on your video in the first place before they can watch it. So as we reverse engineer the process, we realize that in order for the things that we've talked about to actually matter, we actually need to have videos that are enticing enough that people are actually going to click on them. Now that sounds obvious, but how are we going to do this? We optimize and improve what's called our click-through rate, the amount of people who click on our video when they see it served to them on YouTube. Now the two best ways to improve your click-through rate without a doubt are your titles and your thumbnails. Firstly, let's start with titles. Earlier we mentioned that the YouTube algorithm analyzes titles and uses the keywords and keyword phrases within them to figure out what our video is actually about. But we need to also remember that as people are scrolling through YouTube, the two things they see that will entice them to click on our video, as opposed to all of the other videos listed in the similar categories, are the title and the thumbnail. So you need to make sure your title communicates the value that your video is going to give your viewer. Otherwise, even if the algorithm has promoted your video to that person, or maybe that person has searched for your specific video and they see it listed in the search results, if your title isn't convincing enough, if it doesn't convey the value in your video, people aren't going to click it, and that's a problem. Secondly, thumbnails. A picture's worth a thousand words, they say. And when it comes to thumbnails, it may as well be a hundred thousand words. You need to make sure your thumbnail grabs attention, that it's clickable, and at the very least, it gets the viewer's attention and induces them to read your video title. Now, the goal is your thumbnail and title tag teaming together will convince people to click on your video, and there you go, you have views. Next, create outstanding content. It doesn't matter how many tips, tricks, strategies, or techniques you implement. If your content is terrible, you won't see any success. Think about it like a movie. There are a lot of techniques to having a best-selling movie, but if the movie itself is like watching paint dry, it won't be successful. For example, My Big Fat Greek Wedding was a movie that had a budget of $5 million. Now that might sound like a lot, but in the movie world, anything with a budget of under 10 million is considered a low budget movie. However, despite having relatively no name actors, probably a very small promotional campaign, campaign and all the other things that go along with having a low budget, the movie went on to gross over 368 million in box office sales. That's pretty impressive and it's all because people enjoyed the movie itself. However, let's look at a movie like Justice League, which had a big production budget of 300 million. Justice League had it all. It had the reputation and had the existing fans. I'm sure it had a massive marketing budget. I'm sure very few expenses were spared when it comes to putting together the set. It had world famous actors, top of the line video editors, and all that other jazz that goes with high 
high-level movie production, but according to Wikipedia, it's estimated that the movie lost between 50 and 100 million overall. Why? Because people didn't like the movie itself. When we look at these two movies, granted I understand that My Big Fat Greek Wedding and Justice League probably have different target audiences, I'm just using these two movies as examples because they contrast each other well. My Big Fat Greek Wedding was so much more successful than the movie Justice League, regardless of budget, actors, fan base, experienced directors or anything like that, purely because people liked the movie itself. Which unfortunately the same can't be said for Justice League. This example illustrates it perfectly. It doesn't matter how great you are at implementing all the tips and tricks, it doesn't matter what your budget's like, if your content sucks, people won't watch your videos, the algorithm won't promote your videos, and you won't get subscribers. Next, our final point, cultivate a winning mindset. Now, I'm not trying to get all motivational and cringy on you, but let's look at this objectively. Over the long term, you are the driving force behind your channel. Without you, the GYGC method, or any other method for that matter, is completely redundant. Obviously, right? Well, maybe, yes. But let me ask you, have you thought about investing in yourself? Do you have or have you paid attention to cultivating a winning mindset? Now, unlike the past few tactics, I can't give you some simple actions or principles. This is uh, to do with psychology and it's a much more complicated than the YouTube algorithm. However, even though I'm not a psychologist and you feel free to take my advice with a grain of salt, I'll do my best to share what I believe to be one of the most important elements of a winning mindset. Hunger. No, not physical hunger, although I do recommend staying well nourished and eating your greens. I'm talking about a different kind of hunger. I'm talking about a burning desire for success. Hunger is the unstoppable internal force that will motivate you and inspire you to find a way no matter what obstacles you face. You know, you reminded me of a story. There was a young guy who came to me one time and he was really wanting to be successful on YouTube and I said to him, young man, do you really want to be successful? And he was like, yes, I do. I'm working so hard and I just can't figure this out. Can you please help me? And so I said to him, I'm like, okay, meet me at the beach at 6 a.m. sharp tomorrow morning and I'll teach you how to be successful. Now, he looked at me like I was going insane, which is fair enough, and like a true badass, I spun on my heel and walked out of the coffee room. Now, the next morning I arrived at the beach at 5.50 and I waited for this young man to turn up. When he did, he came trudging along the sand. It was a funny spectacle. He was dressed for business. He had his laptop. He had his extremely large towel so no sand got in his electronics. He had his portable internet hotspot. He was ready for YouTube success. And so when he got to me, he was a little bit surprised because I was in my swimmers. And so I said to him, just drop all this stuff, follow me. And I started walking into the water. I didn't give him time to protest. And so after a quick moment of hesitation, I saw him I start taking off his shoes and his shirt. And then he came down to join me in the water. Now I was waiting ahead of him and I got up to about waist deep and I waited for him there. And I called to him. And so he waited out to where I was. And when he got there, he was a bit frustrated. He's like, this is ridiculous. Why am I going swimming at six o'clock in the morning? You said you'd teach me how to be successful on YouTube. I don't know what being shark bait has to do with YouTube success. And so at that moment, I grabbed him and I shoved his head under the water and I held him there. He struggled and he tried to come up for air. And because I'm so massive and ripped and strong, he couldn't get up. And I held him under the water. And just as he was beginning to weaken, I pulled him out of the water and <gasps> let out a gasp for air. And so I said to him, when you want to succeed on YouTube, as badly as you just wanted to breathe, that is when you'll be successful. Now, quick legal disclaimer, obviously that didn't happen. I just ripped off a story I heard one time that I thought was cool. But hopefully it's helped illustrate this message. When you want to succeed as badly as you want to breathe, nothing will stop you. As you know, due to my incessant bragging, I've been fortunate enough to work with a bunch of successful YouTube creators and I've noticed the one thing they all have in common is a hunger for success and it's the foundation of a winning mindset. So as I wrap this video up, let me ask you, how hungry are you for success? Are you committed to turning your YouTube goals into realities or do you just kind of want it? So thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope it helped you out and I'm humbled that you watched this far. However, I understand that we've covered a lot today and you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed. So here's what I'm gonna do. Over the coming months, I'm gonna create individual videos on each one of these 11 steps. I'm gonna put them into a playlist to help you effectively learn about each category in more detail. So if you're watching this in the future, I'm gonna link that playlist on screen and in the video description now so I'd highly recommend you check it out anyway thanks again for watching this video I really do appreciate it and I hope it helped you I'm off to head by the curb I'll catch you